episode hosted by Jessica. <laughs> False opening. False opening. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Jess and I am here with director David Wald and in the booth, well technically we're not in the booth today. But still, as long as we're in the booth in our hearts. We're in the aircraft carrier. Yes, carrying us to a secret location. Indeed, one that can never be released to the public. <laughs> and or to me, because I will tell the public. He will, he can't keep a secret at all. So tell us, David, a little bit more about why you decided to dub Love Stage specifically. I watched the first 15 seconds of it and knew I had to dub Love Stage. Like, How did you um, know, though? Well, I was on a quest at the time because I had only really just become aware of the, the prevalence of, of queer stories in anime. And I mean, like everyone else, I knew about the really crazy stuff that, you know, I'd heard ru rumors. But then I had the opportunity to play Bulat in a Kame Ga Kill, member of Night Raid. And yeah, uh, give us a little show. Yes, that's a, well, maybe at the end of this. <laughs> yeah, so I played Bulat, and, and that was the first uh, character I'd encountered, really, I think, in anything, Western uh, medium or, or any other, where there was a character who was gay and it wasn't his only contribution to the narrative. We still get a lot of characters who are really just the gay one, you know? And their only job in a narrative, in a film or a television show, is to constantly be the gay one. And so what about the love stories, uh, love, yeah, love stage. I'm thinking of Hirojima, my hero. What about the love stage story spoke to you outside of like, oh, well, these are gay characters, but the yeah. story itself, like what about it spoke to you? Well, I'd, I'd watched quite a lot of shows by then. I went on a splurge walking, watching all the yaoi and the shonen eye I could find for science. Science, guys. Um, and uh, I watched a few shows before I hit love stage, and I'd watch an episode or two, just kind of get a feel for them. I found a lot of them problematic mm -hmm. for a lot of the reasons that a lot of yaoi is problematic. It's a lot of like assertive older male uh, basically forcing himself on a younger male until the second to last episode where the younger male, epi the, the younger male is like, it's what I wanted all along. Um, so problematic. And uh, that trope is present in, in Love Stage, but what happens in Love Stage is it kind of turns it upside down. Mm -hmm. And uh, the character who, in, who kind of initiates that, who begins by s sort of asserting himself on Izumi, he spends the rest of the season making up for it. Um, so that was a real, uh, that was a, 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 a real trigger for me. Like I was like, oh, oh that this is amazing, like because I've seen enough of anime to know what generally happens. You know what I mean? But Love Stage was very different from the beginning. The other thing that really attracted me to it was that Ryoma, our other main character, is a a, a movie star. Like uh, over in Japan, he's somewhere around the popularity of like Leonardo DiCaprio or around Titanic, right? So it would be so like if huge. Leonardo DiCaprio came out as gay. Yeah, it's yeah, a pretty big deal. Yeah. Yeah, and it happens in this show, and Izumi comes from a supportive family. Even, even they even are manipulative to be supportive. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's pretty extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, there are other gay characters in the show, which you will learn over the course of the show, uh, you know, gay characters who maybe have some wisdom and insight to share with young Izumi and Ryoma. Um, it's just like, it hit every important note for me. It gave us characters who's, who were far more than just the gay character. Uh, it gave us a really beautiful love story. Like, it's funny and it's farcical in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, satirical in a lot of ways, but there are moments where this show turns on a dime from ridiculous comedy to just like, the most heart-wrenching I'll love you forever speeches. Like, it's, it just turns on a dime. You were trying to get Love Stage dubbed for years, correct? Mm. So tell us a story on how it actually managed to get a dub. One night on, a, on, an, on an internet, you know, on, a, on an internet screed, I, I found it. And as I said, I've been watching several shows, but I started watching Love Stage and I stayed up literally all night mm -hmm. and watched the whole show, just like, um, 
and it blew my mind, and I knew immediately what I had to do. I didn't know at the time, but I, had, I found it shortly after Sentai Filmworks had licensed it and released it on, uh, on disc as, as a sub. So uh, I started setting meetings to talk to people about it, and um, it took a little while to catch on. But eventually I had the meeting that made the difference, and it was um, going to director of production Joey Gubo, and just telling him at that moment, and re I'd been trying for a couple of years already, so it was kind of a Hail Mary pass. Mm -hmm. I was like, I gotta try this one more time. I went in there with like a five minute speech prepared, and I got through less than a minute before Mr. Gubo was like, hold on right here. Went straight to the head of the company, John Ledford, and came back saying, we're gonna do it. And I was like, wait, we are? What, really? <laughs> I didn't expect a yes. So there, uh, uh, it just, the time was right, I suppose. And my hope is to find these stories and tell these stories. I think it's important that a queer voice be at the helm of these stories. So I volunteer my own. <laughs> <laughs> but for the sake of authenticity, and because there are things, there were things in Hitorijime, My Hero, there are things in Love Stage, there were things in another previous title, Bloom Into You, which, you know, when you're following the romance, no matter what uh, your sexual proclivity, you know, there's, it's a great romance story. It's very touching, and anyone can be touched by these stories. But if you're a person who's gone through the process of coming to terms with yourself as a gay person, or a trans person, or a non-hetero, non-cisgendered person, then you've had a unique experience. And really, only someone who's been through that experience is, is able to share that with you in any real way. And the boys in these shows, the girls in these shows, they are dealing with that experience. And I feel like with a, with, a, with a queer voice at the wheel, maybe they'll get something out of it that will go completely over the heads of, of the enthusiastic straight viewers who are just watching it because the love story is so adorable. Um, the gay viewers, the non-hetero, the non-cisgendered viewers, will find a reflection, I hope, of their own experience, because there's certainly a reflection of my experience in it. Growing up gay in the 70s and 80s in Texas under Reaganomics at the height of the AIDS crisis, not a good time. Um, but here we are, and it does get better. That's good to hear. Now, you did mention that one of the main characters here is a movie star. If you could be any movie star for a day, who would you want to be, alive or dead? Any movie star for a day? Any movie star, alive or dead, any gender whoever you want to be. Orson Welles. Orson Welles, really, why? Oh, because Orson Welles is pretty much, am I allowed to say badass in this video? Yes, you can. Orson Welles is the biggest badass ever. Simple enough, right? One of the most gifted actors we've ever seen, one of the most visionary creators we've ever seen. I mean, just watch an interview with Orson Welles. He's astounding. Every word out of his mouth is a revelation. It's insane. So how did casting for this show work for you? Because I know it is your passion, has been your project for such a long time. Were you very particular as to who you cast in which roles? Very. Um, one thing I definitely wanted to do was I wanted to feature queer actors. And not just because they don't get enough work, they need to be featured. It wasn't about that. It was because of the fact that there are characters in this story. I mean, frankly, there are more gay characters in this story than I have gay <laughs> actors to employ. But, um, uh, the thing is that we've got two main couples in this story. We'll focus right now on the primary couple because the other one's a bit of a reveal. Um, but we have two uh, cup couples at, of central focus. And in both cases, there's a member of that couple that's being portrayed by a gay actor. Um, and there's a member of that couple that's being portrayed by a straight actor. And my initial thought was to cast uh, in the primary couple, Ryoma, with a gay actor because he he's the one who seems to have the easiest time accepting his, his new discovery of himself. Whereas Izumi, the blonde, uh, tends to have a far more difficult time coming to terms. And so I thought, I should have a gay actor showing the world how you can come to terms with it and it can be fine. But then I thought, if I do that, then, and I, and I use a straight actor for Izumi, 
then I'm going to lose some of the authenticity of the struggle he's going through. And with a moment's thought, I, you know, it, it occurred to me that I need to be, I need to treat that, that, that struggle with authenticity and with honor. And so I decided to reverse that original thought. Um, I mean, all of this over the course of a couple of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> So you're pretty good with voices, so I heard on the internet that you can do voices pretty well. Do you want to play a game? I don't know what this, I, where are, I don't do, vo what are we, where are we going with this? <laughs> Figured we'd try our hand at doing some uh, sound effects to see how good oh, we are. Oh, sound effects? Yes. Oh, my. Let's All see, right. let's see how, how good we can do this. All right. I'm, not, I'm generally I'll, not the Foley guy, I'll, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a shot. I'll do here. it with you. All right. Okay. So he'll look good by comparison, so I'll just, you know. I'll sacrifice myself. It's the internet. That's the dubcast voice. <laughs> she's the dubcast. She's, she's playing herself down. But she's the one who goes, dubcast. I can't dubcast. do it as well as she. <laughs> See? See? I need something for her to sign, please. All right, so your interpretation or what you believe a helicopter sounds like. Helicopter. A helicopter. <sighs> It's a talking helicopter, It's a talk, talking helicopter, yeah. so it's like um, Knight Rider, but with a helicopter. Right, right. Knight Rider, the Knight Flyer, the flying helicopter, the talking helicopter. Yes. I think we have a show. All right, my interpretation of a helicopter. Helicopter. And then you just repeat that. I could feel the wind. I could feel the altitude and the vibrations. You, this is, this is how you moved. get great performances from your actors. You it, hype them up because exactly. I know that was trash, so. <laughs> All right, would you like to leave us with any final thoughts on Love Stage? I think um, final thoughts on Love Stage, wow. It's, I've, I've been thinking about it and working on it for three years. It's kind of hard to imagine a final thought. I may never have a <laughs> final thought. As I said, I think uh, uh, non-hetero, non-cisgendered viewers are gonna have an experience with it that probably the straight viewers won't have so much because it comes from experience. And the show in the original Japanese, I think, touched on it, and I think our adaptation touches on it even further. Uh, which was our goal with Hito Rijime as well, to tell an authentically queer story. I cried a lot in that show. So did so I. I'm getting Every ready. session. Every actor who comes in reading a line, I'm just like, <laughs> can, can we get another <laughs> one for safety? I didn't get it. Um, but Love Stage is a very charming show. It's a very funny show. I think anybody who enjoys a nice story will find something to enjoy in it. And I think uh, queer viewers are going to find a reflection perhaps an allegorical, an archetypal reflection of their own experience in it, because I certainly did first time I viewed it, and it was my effort in writing the script and in directing the show to keep that absolutely intact and to even enhance it where I could. Um, and I think these characters are lovely, and I think they're charming, and I've got the best actors in the business on this show. So it's going to be worth a watch. Well, thank you so much, David, for spending your time here in our warehouse slash plane. Warehouse? Slash. Warehouse? They told me we were in the executive suite. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching me and David here. We're so happy that you had a chance to, you know, dive deeper into Love Stage. It's such a beautiful story, and we can't wait for you to watch the dub. Now, on High Dive, you can binge watch all the episodes right now as a thank you for supporting us in this endeavor. It's a lot to wrangle right here. So. I suggest not binging it all at once though because feelings, y'all. You binge have to be it strong. all at once. Binge it all at once. We're millennials. It's gonna be fine. You're an honorary millennial. We just binge everything at once. <sighs> you, you guys have a hard edge, you millennials. They're, they're tough to reach, you know? But I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Thanks so much and tune in again. Thank you, everybody.